Our society has countless images, ideas, and stereotypes about change agents. People who help an organization transform by improving business process and interpersonal interactions. Whether influencing fashion, business, art, entertainment, science, politics, or law, these change agents have and continue to positively impact today's society on so many levels. And today, we are proud to share the story of these business owners, coaches, innovators, and thought leaders from various industries who are eager to educate, inspire, and motivate you. This is Our Voices on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Welcome to Our Voices, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Natasha Nurse. I'm the owner and co-founder of Dressing Room A, co-host of Woken Free, and the lifestyle editor of Plus Model Magazine. And this show is focused on highlighting the amazing work of powerful change agents who have a great message to share with the world. And today, I'm super excited to be speaking with Sarah Majors, who is a speaker, facilitator, and relationship therapist. And she does a lot. So let me kind of go through and share with everyone what all uh, her amazing bio. So she empowers and educates audiences with a fiery passion to motivate people to create fulfilling lives. She's on a mission to revolutionize the way that people live, work, love, and lead. She's the founder of Esteem Builders Coaching, and her reputation is built on her ability to explore difficult topics with compassion. As a licensed mental health therapist, her education in the science of human interaction and mindset mastery combined with 14 years of working directly with individuals and organizations make her an expert at teaching interpersonal and leadership skills for achieving success, fulfillment in all areas of your life. So without further ado, Sarah, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So let's get everyone uh, kind of up to speed with uh, your amazing background. So how did you become the woman you are today? I think it started out from just facing challenges in life. I would say the biggest key was the growing up. We were a middle class, you know, upper middle class family, and I never really thought about anything or had like awareness, like you're just kind of loving life. Mm -hmm. And then following my parents' divorce, we very quickly went from upper middle class to not so much on the other side of the fence. Mm -hmm. And that's when I think I achieved that awareness of like what actually is going on in the world and what it takes and to be resilient and uh, to have struggle and strife and to be independent. Because from that moment, I was fully independent and have been ever since. Um, and so I think that was the turning point for me. And I'm grateful for that turning point because it taught me those skills of resiliency to be able to get back up from falls. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, when it comes to dealing with going from, you know, like kind of like what you're saying, like a, a, a comfortable existence to a not so comfortable existence, what would you say was like the number one resource or thing that you held on to as you went through that challenging period in your life? Um, the number one thing I think I held on to was that perseverance and that persistence. Like I've always been a watch me girl Mm -hmm. and where it was like, you can't do that or your dreams are too big or there's no way that's ever going to happen. That always motivated me to be like, well, watch me because I'm about to prove you wrong. So that Mm. would fuel me. (laughs) Gotcha. Okay. So just kind of really thriving for success. Okay. I like it. Now, in so many years of dealing directly with individuals and organizations, what would you say are keys for people who are struggling with like creating boundaries? Because I have found that as we're moving forward in our life and as we're we're determined and tenacious to live the lives we want, that really does involve setting boundaries, some good and some for, you know, situations that are not so good. What are keys to kind of being a boundary boss? Well, I agree with you 100%. It's one of the biggest things that I work with entrepreneurs and businesses on Mm -hmm. is there's such a bad reputation and myths around boundaries. People always think, well, boundaries are bad or it has this negative perception. And it's so important to know what your boundaries are first off. Mm. And if you don't know them yourself, you can't teach them to other people. And we don't ever have these conversations about, well, what are my boundaries? Mm. It's just somebody crosses one, we get upset or we get our feelings hurt or we get annoyed. And then that's when we do something about it. (laughs) 
Oh, interesting. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so if we know what our boundaries are ahead of time and we really ask ourselves, what is okay and what is not okay with me? Because that's really all boundaries are. It's simply saying what is okay with me and what is not okay with me. Interesting. And then breaking it down into like tangible things like what's okay with me when it comes to my physical space, when it mm. comes to how people treat me emotionally or how people speak to me, things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's knowing it that way you can communicate that to other people so that they know how to love you best, how to treat you best. And then you don't have those moments where people are crossing the boundary and then you're getting your feelings hurt because then people know kind of like the blueprint Mm -hmm. up front. Gotcha. Okay. So essentially you're suggesting we like create the rule book for us, right? Like me, myself and I, like, what do I want? And uh, like, do we post this on Facebook? Like how do we, how do we share our, our rule book for like life? Well, so then it actually brings me to the next step of what I tell people is to practice those stock statements. Mm. Because I don't know about you, but I do not do good on the fly. Like in a situation where somebody has done something, I'm usually in that shock or like frozen state of I can't believe that just happened. (laughs) So I don't react as quickly as I would like. Mm -hmm. But if I have these stock statements as like, you know, these little Uh, cards in my pocket to be like, hey, that's not okay with me. Or, hey, I'm feeling defensive right now. Can you say that in a gentler way? Mm. Or that's a no fly zone for me. Or even something as that creates space or a pause. Mm -hmm. So something like, um, let me give that some thought and I'll get back to you. Or let me check my calendar and then I'll get back to you. That gives us that pause and that extra space to really check in with ourselves and be like, is this okay with me? Is what Mm. they're asking actually okay with me? Rather than feeling pressured to handle things right then in the moment. Mm. Okay. And what would you say are the biggest challenges that people struggle with when creating this rule book or this, these lists of like boundaries for themselves? It's definitely fear. Mm. People are afraid of not being liked. Mm. They're afraid of conflict. Uh, afraid of being seen as mean. So essentially, it's like people pleasers are the ones who will say that they have the most issues with boundaries because they want to please everybody because they don't want to feel rejection. They want everybody to like them. And maybe they grew up where conflict was viewed as a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And in, in where I grew up in my culture, like it was not a bad thing. Conflict was something that actually brought you closer with people because it gave you a deeper understanding of what was real and truth. And so a lot of people, especially here in America, they don't grow up in that same culture. And so they grow up in a culture that conflict is bad. And so people are afraid to advocate for themselves and say what their boundaries are. Mm, okay. Well, you're not from America? I am, but I my culture that I grew up in is Italian. And mm. so in an Italian home, <laughs> we don't... We are not afraid to speak up. We're not afraid to say what we think and feel. And everybody says it all the time and says it really mm-hmm. loud. And then you get over it and then you move on from there. You you heal it. But everybody's mm. very, <laughs> it's not seen as a negative thing. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. You are listening to Our Voices on the Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Natasha Nurse, and my guest today is Sarah Majors, speaker, facilitator, and relationship therapist. And so you were just talking about boundaries. I I feel like you had something else to say, too, though. I always tell people, to when they're taking that pause, to ask themselves, will this momentary discomfort trump long-term resentment? Oh, uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And with you, just since we're in we're in sharing mode, uh, what would you say are uh, some of the biggest boundaries that you've struggled with maybe enforcing or even realizing that that was a boundary for you? Um, I would say probably the thing I struggled with the most was when it comes to loved ones and creating those boundaries there. Hmm. So... And I don't mean like immediate family. I mean, you know, just that one circle out. So whether Mm -hmm. it's in-laws or uh, step-siblings or things like that, Mm -hmm. 
and really being able to feel safe to say, hey, that's not okay with me. I think it comes up a lot when you become a parent because Mm. then you have to advocate on behalf of what you want for your children. So it's a whole new set of challenges when it comes to creating boundaries. And you're more likely to speak up for your kids than you are yourself. Mm. So it's a great, it's a great way to practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when it comes to necessary boundaries, what are boundaries if you could have kind of like a a, a must list boundaries that everyone should be not only thinking about, but also implementing in their lives? What would those be? For me, I feel like when it comes to the mental and emotional, the communication piece, one of the hard, fast boundaries I believe is so important and necessary is no criticism, no name calling, Mm. no shaming not Mm. being demeaning, things like that. So for me, that is a hard and fast boundary Mm -hmm. that I think is necessary for anybody. Okay. And just to play the devil's advocate here, if you have expressed this boundary and that someone is uh, kind of breaching the boundary and the person doesn't want to change their behavior, doesn't want to apologize, doesn't want to own up for it, what's your advice? In those situations, and that. When you ask me what is the biggest struggle, that is the biggest struggle is because Mm -hmm. I'll communicate, hey, this is a boundary. And just because I communicate it doesn't mean the other person agrees with it. Mm -hmm. And so then I have to say to them, you don't have to agree with this. You just have to honor it and respect it. Mm. And then if they continue to violate it, then it's about setting up uh, different spaces. So whether it's creating more space and maybe not sharing as much in that relationship or not uh, allowing such interpersonal, like you create more of a distance there. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's another thing to do as well. Mm. So it's basically like, how can I continue to have a relationship with you while also keeping myself safe and honoring me? Okay. Interesting. And what would you say, uh, being that you have such a, you know, extensive background with therapy and, and mental health, what is the connection between mental health and creating these boundaries that people should have in their lives? Right. So where there's a lack of boundaries, it creates resentment. Mm-hmm. And resentment is like a cancer. I mean, it invades your whole soul and it has physical ramifications, you know, your muscles are tight, your stomach is tense, health problems, things like that. And so that's why I always say momentary discomfort versus long-term resentment, because the resentment becomes the cancer in your relationships, in your feelings of self-worth and self-esteem. And you become resentful with yourself of why didn't I do something different? Why didn't I advocate for myself? Things like that. Mm, okay. And do you feel like people are aware of this or no, not so much? <laughs> not so much. Mm. Not so much. Yeah. And I feel like they're not aware of the benefits of it, that the fear overrides their why. Like your why always has to be bigger than your fear in order for us as humans to put ourselves out there. Mm. And so if they don't even know the benefits, like closer relationships, or less anxiety, less confusion, less conflict, more confidence, the fulfillment of being loved and being understood in the way that you want to be loved and understood. Like if that becomes the focus and that becomes your why of, I want to have closer relationships. I want to have promotions at work. I want to have more success. If that why becomes bigger than your fear, then that's when people will advocate and will implement the boundaries. Mm. Absolutely. You are listening to Our Voices. My name is Natasha Nurse. More with my guest, Sarah Madras, speaker, facilitator, relationship therapist, next on The Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Excuse me. I know you have a nine o'clock, so I'll keep this short. I'm the business suit in the back of your closet. You wore me nearly every day before your office went, quote, casual. I used to be the CEO of your closet. Now I'm just that one intern no one ever talks to. I always thought you'd circle back with me, get granular, keep me in the pipeline. But nada, nothing. Don't you remember the McKittrick presentation? You spilled coffee on me and I still looked amazing during the breakout talkback Q&A. So I think it's time for me to move on. 
I've got a great resume and I absolutely crush it in interviews, okay? Let's make this a clean break. Shift the paradigm. The only thing I ask is that you think outside the box here and do this. Take me to Goodwill, where I can really make a difference. Your donations to Goodwill create new jobs, training programs, and education assistance for people in your community. To find your nearest donation center, go to goodwill.org. Donate stuff. Create jobs. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Our Voices on the Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Natasha Nurse, and my guest today is Sarah Magis, speaker, facilitator, and relationship therapist. Oh, Sarah. So I have so many questions. I have to ask you them all. Okay. So <laughs> when bring it comes, it, bring it. I want them all. When it comes to resources, what would you say are good books, podcasts, uh, blogs, uh, videos that people can tune into that really can help them maintain and also develop healthy boundaries in their life? Uh, I would say to, first off, surround yourself with people with that same shared vision. So if you're only surrounding yourself with people in the comfort zone of people pleasers or who don't implement boundaries, then that's what you're only going to be used to. But when you start seeking out people who do advocate and who are empowered and uh, who step up and say and speak out, then you're going to be able to know, okay, I have the permission to do that too. And so that requires, you know, no money to do that. It's just surrounding yourself and increasing (laughs) your level of awareness of who you're with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have other tips as well? And I would say, um, to know the difference between advocating and alienating. And Mm. so I feel like that's another mistake that gets made is that people think, okay, in order to maintain boundaries, I have to be aggressive and loud and that alienates people. And so they swing either over to really aggressive or they swing to really passive. And it's finding that happy medium of being assertive where you can advocate for yourself in a loving way. So you advocate through love rather than being passive through fear or being aggressive through anger. Interesting. What if you, because you kind of pointed to it a little bit earlier, when you're dealing with someone who's just like a constant, like, I know, I'm right, I'm never going to change, I'm going to do what I want to do. Do you advocate that uh, really the, the best boundary to have in place is just to kind of minimize the contact with that person? Because, you know, you can you can share your intentions like we were talking about before, but if the person's not willing to compromise, then there's nothing you can do other than focus on you your decisions and how you respond and how you act. Correct. Completely. Mm -hmm. And I feel like at some point it becomes borderline abusive. If you've expressed to someone in a loving way, and if you've advocated for yourself and they're expressing no remorse or Mm -hmm. no desire to understand you and to connect with you in that way, because boundaries are healthy connection. Mm. And so then that shows you, hey, this person isn't capable of healthy connections and they're not respecting who I am. Mm-hmm. So what kind of relationship do you really want with that person? Mm. And so it's not that you have to cut them out completely, but maybe you minimize the duration and the frequency of the interaction you have. Maybe mm-hmm. you minimize the level of intimacy of the things that you share and the experiences you share with them. And it becomes... Uh, more of a distance, maybe surface relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That makes sense. Absolutely. And uh, I want people to to know also where they, because being as this is something that you work with, what if people were interested in speaking with you more about this, what's the best way for them to to reach you and contact you about this? Yeah, they can check out my website at sarahmadras.com. So it's S-A-R-A-H-M-A-D ras.com mm-hmm. and if they want support i have a boundaries support group that they are welcome to participate in okay wonderful and what's that support group like or about so essentially because of my background i'm able to hit both the personal and the professional side mm-hmm. and boundaries you know seep into both personal and professional and so on the calls 
we go into what are you struggling with right now? Are you struggling in your personal life of setting boundaries so that your business can be successful? Are you struggling with a family member or maybe you're struggling at work mm. with your boss? You know, healthy work-life harmony or advocating for yourself on not working, you know, 45 hours a week <laughs> in a corporate job mm. and being able to create those boundaries in those positions as well. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, great. And uh, when when it comes to mistakes to avoid when, and I feel like you've touched on it a little bit, but if there are other things, uh, when people are trying to create these boundaries, are there mistakes that you see that are commonly made that you haven't already addressed? And if so, what are they and how can people avoid them? I would say the only other mistake to avoid is not getting discouraged just because you don't get the reaction from someone else that you were hoping. Mm. And instead to seek out the evidence of the times when it has worked and has been a positive experience, because Mm. typically what happens is people are so afraid to implement boundaries. And so they like test it out. So test it out with the people you feel most safe with on like the smaller things and then build from there because you'll have that positive experience. And then you'll say, okay, the world didn't end. It didn't blow up into this huge conflict. I feel better. And it, like you have that sense of this exhale and you see the evidence of your life improving, your relationship with that person improving. And so then you try it on the next level, like with the next person or the, mm, you know, gotcha. and go from there. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So like really holding on to when it has been successful in the past and, and not assuming that it won't like land well with this person. And if it doesn't, that's kind of their loss, but you, you're entitled to your boundary. You're entitled to share what you need out of life, out of your business, et cetera. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Cause the evidence is there. Mm. It's just our fear makes us focus on the negative experiences more, even though we've probably had 10 amazing experiences that Mm -hmm. were positive, but that one negative one kind of overshadows everything. So it's being really mindful and purposeful to seek out the evidence of the positive experiences and focusing on that. Mm, I love it. You are listening to Our Voices on the Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Natasha Nurse. My guest today is Sarah Magus, speaker, facilitator, and relationship therapist. Oh, I have a couple more questions, but again, I want make people to know just to make sure uh, if they are interested in developing boundaries for themselves, uh, learning more about how you can help with this process, where do they go? So they go to sarahmadras.com. And actually, I also have, for anybody listening, they can text BOSS to Mm. 919-384-5904. And I will send them the boundaries blueprint Mm. where it has each of the important categories for you establishing what are my boundaries. Like, it's essentially the rule book that you were talking about. I love that. And they can fill it in and map it out. Very cool. Awesome. So now I do have one other question before before we get to uh, understanding more about you, which is, do you feel like there's certain people that are more like likely to cross these boundaries? And I ask, because I have a very pushy family as well, they know who they are. And <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like family Do you feel like family members are more likely to not respect boundaries or is it there's like everyone's kind of it's a free for all? I definitely think it's more likely with family because Mm. you have to keep in mind you would be changing the rules of the game. Mm -hmm. And so if you've been going along with no boundaries at all for the last 25 years and Mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you come along and you're like, I'm going to start implementing boundaries, it freaks everybody out. Because you're changing the system, you're changing the dynamic. And so they get scared of what does this mean for our relationship? What's going to happen? I don't know how to act now. We used to act this way all the time. And it was, you know, I didn't know anything was wrong. I didn't know it was a big deal. Mm. And so you're, as you're learning and implementing, you're teaching them through your example. And so knowing, hey, people are going to get freaked out because you're changing the rules of the game and it's going to scare them. And so just, providing them with that reassurance of, hey, I know I've never said this before and you have no idea and you didn't know that this is happening, but hey, that's not okay with me when X, Y, and Z happens. Mm. 
Mm. And just allowing that to sit there, like you're giving them that reassurance of, I know that I'm starting something new, mm-hmm. and that there's going to be an adjustment period. Awesome. And so now with that, I want to ask you so many more questions, but I do want to make sure that the, the audience knows more about you. So let me ask you some rapid fire questions. Uh, first, with it. <laughs> first one out of the gate is, what is your number one thing on your bucket list? Oh, I want to spend a summer in Italy. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Uh, just you or the, the whole family? <laughs> I want to take the whole family. I want the boys to be submerged in the culture because mm. that was such a powerful experience for me growing up and being able to be surrounded by that because we had a family around us all the time. So, Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. And what is your number one favorite book to read? Uh, Reinventing Yourself by Steve Chandler. It was the first book I ever read on personal development, and it was Mm. the start of my awakening process. I love that, Steve Chandler. Okay. And how do you best unwind and relax? Right now, it's binge-watching Vampire Diaries. Oh, (laughs) love that show. So good. So good. Oh. Oh, gosh. Are you also watching the originals or no? Oh, I'm going to do that next. Yes. And then there's the legacies. I'm, I can't yes. with you. I cannot. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Stop it. Yes. <laughs> I told my husband, I'm like, you're not going to see me for the rest of the year. <laughs> amazing. I love it. Okay. So if you were not, uh, you know, uh, speaker, facilitator, relationship therapist, you would be fill in the blank? A horse whisperer who lives on a ranch and heals oh. horses. Oh, that's beautiful. I love I that. I love horses. Oh, nice. Okay. Favorite quote? You are worthy simply because you exist. I love it. Okay. Who's that said by? That's me. Hey, nice. (laughs) Very cool. (laughs) (laughs) And then lastly, what is something no one knows about you? Um, that I am extremely anxious about parenting and terrified of screwing up my children. Oh, you won't. And there's nothing to fear because you're doing awesome. So thank you. That is the hope. But <laughs> the parent, the mama fear is real. It is a thing. <laughs> no, you're phenomenal. Thank you, Sarah, for coming on to Our Voices. It's such an honor to have you share your, your wisdom and, and your thoughts about boundaries and why we need them and how to implement them. Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate it, and I am grateful for you. Absolutely. Thank you. So, guys, I hope our our audience found Sarah Manager's speaker, facilitator, and relationship therapist as informative and inspiring as I did. My name is Natasha Nurse. I'm the proud host of Our Voices here on 90.3 WHPC. Our show's creative director is Rudy J. Breedy. Visit nccradio.org. That's www.nccradio.org. For more information, this will be available as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. Our Voices is powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC.